you need a logo for your business or brand, right? Like this, this, or this. You can't afford to pay a professional designer. I mean, you've heard of AI and Midjourney. You figured, I'll just make my own logo, right? Well, there's a problem with that. Midjourney doesn't really do that. But the good news is I'm a professional designer and I'm here to share my process on how to use AI to create your own logo. By the end of this video, you will have seen my entire process for going from Midjourney to Illustrator and creating a professional vector logo. I'm really excited to share with creatives and entrepreneurs of all types that need a logo at the beginning of their journey, but don't have thousands of dollars to spend. Anyway, it's important that you spend money the right way at the beginning of your journey. I hope this helps you. Finally, we get into some visual stuff. Logo marks like the Nike swoosh or the Apple logo, Twitter bird, etc. We're gonna use mid-journey, simple prompt language that will allow us to get something that's easily convertible into a vector format. So my first prompt is a simple black alley cat vector logo, one color, yellow eyes, screen print, no shading. I said black alley cat, and in three of them, the background is really distracting. The simple black cat vector logo, one color, enlarged eyes, screen print, no shading on a white background. I realized my first prompt gave me all black backgrounds, and I need a white background just to clip it out easier and to use for the basis of my logo. Still too much detail and a little bit too realistic for my taste. A black cat with lightning bolt iris eyes. This gave me some interesting results. Two out of the four that were similar to the previous round. And then there was one that was very close to what I was looking for. Then I just kept remixing those. This whole process took maybe 15 or 20 minutes. It had some random colors in there and really weird clipping the ears were cut off but i knew that i could fix that fairly easily this is the regular output you can see that it's pixelated you've got all this bad detail here in photoshop when you want to remove these extra colors and weird artifacts so the background's also not 100 percent white even though that's what my prompt said here's what you do you come down here this icon here is your layer mask see add a layer mask Click on that. Now you've got a layer mask here on your layer panel. Click on your layer mask, then go up to the top menu in Photoshop. Go to select color range. Color range window will give you this modal. And essentially you wanna max out your fuzziness normally. Sample the color that you wanna keep. So in this case, I wanna keep the black. I have the invert selection on. Uncheck that. That's a really good quick way to basically get rid of all the colors that are undesirable. Boom. I'm just going to really crudely paint that out. I'm just literally doing that. Little curve. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. On these ears, I need to create a new layer. And I'm just going to fill out the point. Once you're done in Photoshop, you want to export that as a JPEG into Adobe Illustrator. Select your image when you paste it into Illustrator and use the image trace function. If you select it, it'll most likely be in your top bar of your Adobe Illustrator window. There's a drop down. There's many presets and most likely the default one is not going to work for you. In my case, I selected from color to black and white and I played with some of the defaults a little bit, but by and large, I prepared this fairly well, and it was a pretty smooth transition from raster to vector. The last step in the process is to basically clean up your vector. Once you expand your image traced version, you can correct little points and things that might be off. You could change curves. You can do all these things. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, I'm happy to go over it, but there's probably thousands of videos on YouTube. I recommend you look that up. And the pen tool is one of the best tools to learn. So having the cleaned up vector version, now it's scalable. There are ways that I can use this to change colors. I can send this to a print shop to do my merch. You need it to be vector. The last step is to add type. I'm going to go into more detail on this soon. Essentially, you want to type out your name. You want to have different lockups for your logo. So some might be just the cat head. 
that might be my social media icon and my name in, in the social channel could be Black Cat Ceramics, for example. Define the core values that your brand should have. This is sometimes done by creating a list of adjectives that might describe your brand or service. That's usually a helpful exercise. Another thing that's really important is to make sure that you know who your target audience is. I cannot stress this enough. If you design a brand that does not match who you're selling to, you're gonna have a bad time. You also probably wanna do some competitive analysis or research. Look at brands that are aspirational to you, things that you think are good. Collect all of those. It's equally helpful actually to collect brands that you think are doing a terrible job and don't do that. Eliminate those things from your visual language and it will help you fine tune the direction that you go with. Understand your company's identity. I didn't even Google it, but I'm just creating a fictional brand so that you can see Black Cat Ceramics. I would probably spend a little bit more time to get a really perfect result, especially if it was my own brand. These are the results. It's impossible for me to know your exact scenario and there's no dialogue between us, but I'm happy to answer questions in the comments. I will be adding to this series over time, how to design logos, how to design monograms, posters, merch. Stick around, I'll show you my process for doing that next.